Thank you for coming to see this presentation. I'm going to leave you share, share a little bit of what I learned about the system. And if you have any questions, please interrupt me. And I like this to be more of a discussion. This is just our experience using the system for a particular application, which is machine theory. I particularly don't have any conflict of interest regarding uh, this presentation. I've been collaborating with them uh, for, for quite a while, and we, we, we had a very good relationship working together, but there is no uh, exchange of anything. So. so the question that I want to ask is, okay, you, you've seen this system, some of you have, have seen how it works. So the question is, why using the IPM for, ma for machine fuel? What is the purpose of it? So if you think about a car, and you like to go to your car, and uh, what's the first thing that you do? You turn on the key, you turn it on, and if you have something like this, you say, well, uh, maybe I have to do something, okay? There is, a, there is no diagnosis tool about it. It's just telling you that there is a problem with your car. It's very simple, it's very easy to understand in terms of there is a problem, but it doesn't give you more information than that. But let's think about the Linux, and let's see, can we do something similar, something in a way that can tell you if everything is okay, or you need to check. And uh, at least from what I've been trying to explore, personally working with other groups, is I think the IPM has that, that feature. It can help us do that. But in order to do that, we need to think a little bit different. Some of you are physicists, uh, if, if you are, you need to think a little bit different about what quality assurance means. And you are willing to, you should be willing to actually give that, that paradigm. So in, in trying to work with this, uh, we collaborated um, with uh, Princess Margaret as well as with Cedar Sinai in actually trying to understand how to do it. Uh, the best thing is to, when you have these difficult questions, to work with other groups if, if they have better ideas that sometimes I, I personally do, so. So what can we check, okay? The first thing that we were asking ourselves is what is the thing that we can check? So we went and, and actually reviewed the TD142, which is our standard. This is what we actually are supposed to be doing. And try to see what of those checks we can do with this system. So we isolated these ones. We can do the output field size, energy, symmetry, flatness, job position, MLC position, and then IMRT and VMAT delivery. I think we can easily check the performance of the system on those dosimetric parameters. But the question now is how do you do that? I mean, conceptually, the I2M is just one single line chamber which is the beauty, but it also makes it a little bit more challenging. It's very simple, but when you think about traditional QA, you're thinking about special resolution, you're thinking about, okay, you cannot detect these things in different, in different areas. So how can we do those checks that I told you with this, with this system? So what we decided to do is um, to actually do a progressive approach. So we thought that, okay, can we develop a protocol that as you are running it, it can be isolated different components and giving you information about the different things so when you go to the next one, you know that you took care of the, of the previous one. So that's, that was the concept that, in principle, we're still developing, but I think it's going in the right direction. So kind of a progressive approach to it. And the nice thing about it is that since the the diagram is in the gantry, you can do this in any geometry of, on any position. Polymator, gantry position, it's very easy to set up, uh, which is also a challenge when you do a traditional, uh, traditional QA. There is a, a set of component that you need to take into account in terms of the uncertainties. So I think this is, uh, this is what we are exploring and this is what we are really working on. So we came out with this protocol and just think about it, it was, uh, it was a series of apertures that had a specific order uh, and we started with something in the center and then we were moving, moving across and then we were going big and then we were going small in order to isolate different components. And again, the first thing that we wanted to approach is, to, is the output 
the symmetry, the position of the of, of, of the of the jaws, as well as the position of the of the of the cord of some of the MLCs. So when we were doing this testing uh, across a, a single institution, we run it many many times, and the test was very consistent to about half a percent. And the interesting thing is that across all of the other three institutions, if we compare our data, was about about three percent. So that's actually very very neat. This was just uh, the output constancy, and it was uh, across the three institutions. And you can see that for most of them, across the every Gantry position, it was very, very tight. There was one which was a little bit off, which actually was, we were asking why was that, and we, we took a closer look at that. In terms of the symmetry and the flatness, and traditional symmetry just measure uh, the difference between the two points. Uh, at a, at a, at the farthest away from those proto from that protocol that I show you, and the flatness, everything relative to the center, we saw that within an institution it was consistent, meaning that I can use this test, it was consistent with what I was measuring, and we were also seeing that um, uh, that there was some difference that we can identify across the different systems that we were we were doing this, this test. So one of our collaborators from PMAs had a very neat idea and said, well, let's see if I actually can detect an uh, issue with symmetry. So he actually decided to change the symmetry by about 3% plus and minus. And I don't know if you can see it very well, but uh, this was the measurement with a traditional system, which is a, a water scan. And the orange is uh, plus three, and this is still minus three. And you can see that the these are the points measured with the IQA system. And you can see that it's actually following that trend. So we can actually detect those, those changes with, with on the symmetry. He then actually compared the, the linearity of this test uh, using the water tank and the IQM, and you can see that it is very proportional, which is what we want to see. And then he went further and then actually compared it with the output of the ion chamber on the LINAC, and it also showed the same behavior. So. So far, it seems to indicate that this system can actually detect those deviations as long as we know that we have a reference, and then we can start from there and see if start to see those differences in everyday in everyday use. So so far, um, we've been able to test those those uh, those parameters. We are working and trying to do the MLC, and the MLC is a little bit tricky because you can think about the system. If you will, you will test all of them, it will, give you, it will tell you where the issue is. So we're trying to find a protocol that can isolate sections of the MLCs across multiple positions, so actually detect if there is an issue. And we, have, we have some preliminary tests and of doing that and introducing errors, and the system can detect those errors. So that's very, very encouraging. So just to conclude, uh, what is the added value? And this is the thing that I get very excited about. Because I, I can show you that if you have one single LINAC, I mean, if you have a protocol or you have this system, you put it on, you have now with automation of, of, of the LINAC, you can actually run a specific protocol, capture that information with a single button and tell you, okay, your system is performing well, okay? But the thing that is nice for people who have a lot of machines is that maybe we can find a way to actually do this and you can have them all across Different states, or in the same in the same state, uh, to actually measure the efficient, very efficiently the consistency of your machines. You can actually compare the performance of the systems uh, across multiple systems. So far, the beauty of the system is that at least the manufacturing process seems to be very consistent, and that's why I wanted to test three different locations and see if we were getting actually similar results. So I can compare my results with another institution, which I think is, is very powerful when you're thinking about, are my machines actually performing the same way I can do at the different locations? And I think that is a lot of app value for people who have multiple systems. And at Mayo, we do have quite a few, and I'm very excited to, to do more testing on this to understand in fact, you can tell me that all of my machines are performing exactly the same way. You can think more globally, let's just think a little bit more that we can actually do it 
across the globe. I mean, you have a system running, I don't know, in Europe and someone here in the United States, uh, if you have a specific protocol that you are running, you can do the measurement there, you can do the measurement here, and you should expect to get the same the same result, which I think is very powerful when we are checking how we are doing a specific delivery protocol like in multiple systems and multiple institutions. So I'm very excited to continue working on this because I think I think there has a lot of potential for that. So, so in summary, I, I think the system can provide you with a tool to do routine QA and performance of your system. Obviously, you cannot do many other parameters, but parameters that are specific for the delivery, I think it has, it, it can do it. And you can do it in many geometries with a very simple setup. Uh, obviously, the, we are working on this QA protocol. You cannot just run it and actually expect that it will give you an answer. You need to think a little bit differently about how you are doing the test in order to extract that information. And we are working on, on, on that. But you, are, you need to be willing to actually break the paradigm of quality assurance because you're thinking in the same way and you will say, well, what is, what is, what is, what information is giving you? And you need to think about that this is for the check. It's not a diagnostic tool, it's to check that your system is performing the same way that it was performing the day before and the day before. And I think across multiple systems, it's a very, very efficient way to actually do that. So I'm, 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 I'm still hoping that we can, we can continue working on this and, uh, and actually prove that that can be done. So, any questions? Oh, no, sorry, I need to acknowledge my, my partners. <laughs> so, John DeMarco in Cedar Sinai, Andrew Beres with Mayo with me, and the team and, and Princess Margaret has been very fantastic to work with. And Will, he's, Will he's, he's been there, he's been helping us to coordinate meetings and make sure that we keep on track on this project. I think it's this kind of need, and, and we are very, very happy and excited to work with it. So, with that, I let you for any questions.